You have to be able to go between these two forms. Um, the easier way is taking a mixed radical and turning it into an entire radical. The harder way is to go backwards because you have to kind of factor some numbers. If you want to turn this one, all you need to do is take this number and write it as a square root. 3 is the square root of 9. So you have square root of 9 times square root of 5. 3 is the square root of 9. You can write that. If you have two square roots multiplied together, you can write them as a single square root. Square root of 9 times 5. And I'm, I'm out of room there, but, but uh, we won't make more room. Uh, but you can write that as root 45. Actually, yes, let's make more room so it looks a little better. Okay, square root of 45. If, it's a, if it involves a cube root, well, you need to write this number as a cube root of something. Basically, you just have to cube that number, right? 2 cubed is 8, so 2 is the cube root of 8. You got cube root of 8 times cube root of 6. If you have two roots, you can write them as a single one. Cube root of 8 times 6. Cube root of 48, all right? Now, 48 over here, actually, that could help you with factoring this. People found this harder. People generally find this harder because you need to break numbers apart instead of multiplying them together. Remember, there's the two ways that I suggested for you. One way is, okay, we'll do the one way here, which is break it all the way apart into however you factor numbers, factor tree or whatever, try dividing it by numbers, but eventually, eventually you can factor that down to 2 times 2 times 2 times 2 times 3. All right, you have that's what it's factored down to when you factor it, whether you make a factor tree or a stack or however you factor it. If you see that that's true, you can take every pair of numbers. There's one pair. There's another pair, and the 3 is left over. Right? That 2 times 2, that's like a 4, right? This is like a 4. You could write this actually as square root of 4, square root of 4, square root of 3 if you want. Right? The pair of twos is like square root of four. Every pair of twos is going to make a single two outside. Right? This is like a two. Okay? This, this thing. Square root of two times two is two. Square root of two times two here is another two. And then you're left with the three inside. Or if you would rather think about it like I have all these twos inside here, I can take a pair of them outside. I can move this pair outside, but if it's outside the square root sign, I can only have I only have one of them, right? And I can take this pair out, and I only have one of them. A pair of twos underneath is like a single two outside. If that's the way you want to think about it, that's a good way to think about it. That's fine. However, you end up doing it, you got to have four root three in the end, all right? The other method for doing it was just to look for, try to divide it by perfect squares. Don't try to factor it down all the way. You can just try to divide it by perfect squares. Root of 48, you can try dividing it by perfect squares. You know your perfect squares, right? What, what, are, what are perfect squares? Make a list here. 4, 9, 16, 25, 36. Try dividing it by those numbers. Okay, try dividing by those numbers until you find one that works. You could divide it by 4. You could actually divide it by 16. So somebody might say that, hey, 48 is 16 times 3, or square root of 16 times square root of 3. Square root of 16 is 4. You can get there. If you don't recognize that, it's, that, you, can, that you can break it apart into 16, let's say you only make it 4 times 12. That's fine, too. You can say square root of 4 is 2. And I'm left with the square root of 12. But you got to look at what's left over and see if it can be divided up in any way. Can you, uh, can you find a perfect square factor for 12? 12 can be written as 4 times 3. So you can write that one as well, right? Square root of 4, square root of 3. This one's a 2. you got to take out as much as you can. Take out as much as you can before saying you're done. All right? So 4 root 3, however you get there. Okay? Same thing for this one. You might say, you might try dividing by perfect squares if you're doing that method. You could break it all the way down and just take out one for every pair. Or you might say, hey, I write, if I divide this by 2, I get 2 times 81. 81 is a perfect square, right? 
81 is a perfect square that you can actually work out the square root of. What's what's square root of 81? 9, right? So you got you got 9 times square root of 2, and the normal way is to put the 9 in front. Just say 9 root 2. Or if you broke it all the way down, you could pull out one for every pair as well. The last one involves cube roots. So you gotta, you gotta either look for something that's a perfect cube. Do you know your perfect cubes? You don't know your perfect cubes as well as your perfect squares, right? You got 8, 27, 64. This one might be easier to do the break it all the way down method. 2 times 1,000. 1,000 is a perfect cube, right? You could pull out that, or let's say you don't recognize that and you're just breaking it down. You got 10 times 10 times 10. Well, right there, you can see that you can pull that out, right? If you have three tens there, you can pull out, since it's cube root, right? You can put one ten in front instead of three tens inside. It's going to be 10 cube root of three. Or you could break it down even farther, two, five, two, five, two, five, and take out groups of three. Right? The thing that we had, I think, more trouble with is writing these things as powers. You need to know that if you have some root here, let's say this is this is a rule you need to know. The nth root of x um, the nth root of something is the same as that to the power of what? What's it to the same as the power of? What is it? 1 over n. Right? nth root of something is, you know, like you've, you've, you've seen that before. 3 to the 1 half means the same as square root of 3. 3 to the 1 seventh is like the seventh root of 3. So you need to know that rule, okay, of how those things are connected. Because then you can write this as, if you have cube root of some yellow blob here, right? Cube root of that. What's that the same as? What's that the same as? M to the fifth. What can I, what can I write instead of that cube root sign? What can I write? To the third. To the one third, right? Then you've made it into something that in theory we should be able to change now. In grade nine you learned how to deal with power of a power, except you never used fractional powers in grade nine. It's exactly the same. How do you write that as a single power if you've got power of a power? You multiply those two things, right? So you got five times one third. What's five times one third? Five thirds, right? This is what it is as a power. It helps to try and do that two-step process rather than trying to jump right to the answer. Some of you are going to are gonna get used to just jumping right to the answer. It's fine if you do, if you kind of learn for yourself, oh, that's the top of the fraction and that's the bottom of the fraction. I'm fine with that, okay, if you want to do that. But you, you can also get it by using that intermediate step. You might then get tricked by one that's actually easy because you say, oh, look, there's no number there. What is it? Square root of something is the same as that to the power of one half, okay? Hopefully that, hopefully that helps with the big chunk of section 4.4.